morning, everyone, and welcome to Digital Imperative Tourism of the Future. My name is Kylie Mebus, and I'm from Open Austria. And I'm Martin Rauchbauer. I'm also from Open Austria. Together, we are joining you from San Francisco. This open salon is a first in a new series focusing on Austria's digital transformation and connecting our innovation leaders to Silicon Valley, the world's most important hub for technology and innovation. Digitalization has become imperative for companies around the globe. During this series, we'll explore how Austria is handling this transition, and we'll talk to top political representatives, entrepreneurs, think tanks, legacy companies, and creative minds from both Austria and Silicon Valley. In our first episode of the Digital Imperative series, we will take a closer look at the pandemic's impact on tourism and dive into the trends shaping the global tourism industry's future. Additionally, we will explore the impact of these trends on this important sector of the Austrian economy. Our guests today are Ellen Madeker. She's the head of public policy for the DAC and the Central Europe, uh, Central and Eastern Europe region for Airbnb. We also welcome Reinhard Lanner, the CDO of the Austrian National Tourist Office, Stefan Linhardt, the Senior Director Sales, Austria and Slovakia of the Lufthansa Group, and also Surish Sivanjana, the Managing Director of Modul University in Vienna. Also, we have Tobias Schrott, the Founder and Head of Growth at the Startup Giggle Tips. And then, of course, uh, I want to give a very, very warm welcome to our Austrian Federal Minister for Agriculture, Regions and Tourism. We will start uh, with you, Minister Köstinger. You have been responsible for the areas of sustainability and tourism on the national level for multiple years. You've been both witness and leader of the tremendous changes occurring in the tourism sector over the last years. It is your priority to pave Austria's path towards becoming one of the top tourist destinations in Europe once again, sustainably and in cooperation with local and small businesses. So here's my question. We're just entering the summer season of tourism and after many months of restrictions, today, some of them were lifted in Austria. COVID-19 cases fortunately are low at the moment and we can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. However, the tourism industry around the world has suffered tremendously during the pandemic. And even with a strong recovery, innovation will be needed for tourism businesses in order to get back on its feet. Austria is a top tourist destination. So here's my question. How did the country fare during the pandemic and what kind of path do you see for Austria's tourism of the future? Well, first of all, um, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, Clara and Martin, for setting up uh, this event. It's uh, truly an exciting topic that uh, we are going to discuss. And thank you for having me here today. Uh, well, um, a few years ago, our now Chancellor Sebastian Kurz told me about his visit in Silicon Valley that uh, he had uh, taken foreign means as a uh, foreign minister um, and uh, he went there together with representatives of the Austrian innovation scene and had discovered the enormous opportunities um, that lie there for us. And he told me at the time that uh, he had set up a consulate for this purpose. And this is why I have closely followed your work over the years. And I'm glad that I finally get to know you personally today. You have done incredible and exciting work over the past few years. And uh, that is also recognized by prominent people. Um, I heard that even Daniel Kehman recently thanked you for your work in one of his books. So I think uh, your work is really very highly appreciated. For me, um, that, also, that also means that you represent our country really well. And for that, I would really like to congratulate you. And of course, um, I say this also um, as a Minister of Tourism, because the success of Austrian tourism also depends to a large extent on the image of our country in the world. And yes, some of the success of Austrian tourism depends on the traditional image of Austria. However, we have also to keep working on our image and be innovative in order to remain successful in the future. 
And I'm proud um, to see that we have uh, so many outstanding innovative minds here today to discuss this. Um, I would like to share with you a few thoughts from the political perspective and, of course, then uh, I would like to listen to your ideas. The advancing digitalization poses major challenges uh, for the tourism industry, but at the same time brings with it many opportunities. The entire tourism service chain is affected by it, and especially the research and booking behavior of our guests is changing. And also as a result, marketing and the way of selling services are changing. For a highly developed uh, tourism destination, such as Austria, digitalization brings great opportunities to increase productivity and target supply on demand. Even processed uh, within the value chain can also be designed more efficient through digitalization. And without a doubt, Corona pandemic has accelerated the digitalization process. I uh, really believe that in every crisis, there is also a, uh, an opportunity and tourism is facing its greatest crisis of the last few decades. Due to the positive situation, Austria was able to reopen tourism and all related sectors on May the 19th. And today, almost all restrictions will be lifted. This gives us even more reason to look ahead. Now is the time to regain competitiveness through digital innovation. This is how we can quickly return to the status of global leader of tourism. And precisely because all areas of the industry can benefit from digitalization, there is a lot of potential for innovation. The collection and evaluation of data, the detection of trends and their timely implementation are essential for Austrian tourism to remain competitive. The Austrian tourism organization and businesses are now facing the challenge of coping with these new and of course additional tasks. So we require a joint national initiative in order for the sector to proactively shape the digitalization and transformation to retain the highest possible level of self-determination and of course to assert itself in the new distribution structures such as global platforms. The COVID-19 pandemic has very clearly demonstrated the critical role of digitalization especially in times of crisis on the one hand, robust digital processes ensure more stability for the economy, the country, and um, of course, also for the society. And on the other hand, um, is the digital transformation now particularly important as a driver of innovation and growth in order to secure economic strength and prosperity for the future? The time is now just about right to boost uh, all these trends and uh, we as a public sector do proactively support and encourage the digital transformation. So for example, last year, so pre-corona, um, we developed a new tourism strategy for Austria. And um, there, one of the major priorities is of course digitalization. Our aim is not to create innovative ours, innovation ourselves, but uh, rather make it easier for companies and entrepreneurs to use it. The Austrian tourism agency, so-called Österreich Werbung, is one of our main implementation partners. And I'm very happy uh, that I saw Mr. Langer today with us to present the most exciting projects we are working on currently, like a um, major data hub for low threshold access to data analysis, or also a tool for automated detected and responding to inquiries. Besides these uh, projects, uh, looking ahead into the future, we as public service must also think ahead and um, identify new areas of application. So for example, digital guest data sheet 
as a uniform e-government solution is in the making or interlinking public transportation, especially for tourism. So seamless travel planning is crucial in order to avoid the necessity for a car, for example. But most importantly, we do not only wish to be a global tourism hotspot, but also an international hub for innovative companies in the field of tourism. We do already have some exciting successes here. For example, I'm very proud uh, that we have uh, the Modul University in Vienna and the internationally renovated training institution in the field of uh, tourism and is led by an innovative entrepreneur. And I'm very happy that he is also here today. The Californian Accelerator Plug and Play bundles its global activities on the subject of travel and hospitality in Austria. And also, and this is uh, also something we are very proud of, uh, in Salzburg, there is a dedicated accelerator just for tourism companies. So we are very much interested in innovative uh, um, ideas in this area, but also do have to offer a lot. With this in mind, I'm uh, looking forward to all your contributions. Thank you so much for your attention. All the best. A lot going on in terms of innovation and digitalization. And the time is ripe to start this digitalization for everybody. Very, very important words uh, by Minister Köstinger. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I know you cannot stay with us the whole time. So all the best for the upcoming tourism season in Austria and of course, uh, for the future of tourism. All right, and thank you so much, Minister Köstinger. We are going to move on to our next speaker, Reinhard Lana. Reinhardt served as managing director at multiple Austrian tourism organizations for many years. Additionally, he set up the digital media and online marketing department for Salzburger Land Tourismus, and he teaches digitalization and communication at universities. As chief digital officer at Österreich Werbung, he is currently responsible for digitalization agendas, aiming to explore the possibilities and opportunities of technology for Austrian tourism and establish better collaborations. So Reinhardt, how do you see the future of guest relations going forward? Are they going to be solely digital? Thank you, Kylie. Thank you, Martin, for having me. I don't think it will be solely digital, but what I think we have to learn is we should uh, stop separating in our thoughts the uh, digital world and the physical world. There is only one world and the digital world at the moment is going like a layer over our life. So we have many, many touch points. And as uh, Minister Kerstina already mentioned, uh, things change, the way people uh, communicate change, the way people get their information changes. The smartphone is quite, kind of um, remote control for our life. And uh, that's something where we have uh, to find answers. And that's very, very difficult, especially for uh, a, a sector which is made up with many, many mom and pop businesses. If you take Austria, Austria is kind of really world champion uh, in, in terms of uh, tourism. And everybody who lives here like me knows why, because it's great uh, kind of nature, it's great culture, and then, and, and what we have to do now is uh, find a kind of twin Austria in a digital world. And that's uh, what the Austrian National Tourist Office uh, does. Minister Kerstinger was pushing us forward and said, uh, innovation should be one new instrument not only communication, which is uh, the core function of national tourism organization, but also come up with innovative ideas, new instruments which support uh, the industry, the small and medium sized industry. Uh, I think in future we also should not only focus on silos, how we did that in the past. So digitization is very, very important, but we also have other drivers. Uh, we have kind of green transition, which is very, very popular. And green transition, which also affects uh, the, the way we will travel in future. 
So we will focus on all these things. So digital uh, digitization, a big driver, uh, green transition, a big driver. And what all these things bring together is that we also have a systemic way we have to change. The way we work together has to change. The, um, the competitive factor of the past was maybe comparative advantage and competitive advantage. Yeah? We, we should have something other people don't have, or we should have uh, uh, use our instruments better. For the future, I'm sure collaborative advantage is one of the competitive factors, and that is why we in Austria, try to come up with a platform. Next Level Tourism Austria, hosted by the Austrian National Tourism Organization, is a platform for all the DMOs. There are about 150 DMOs in Austria, on a regional level, on a provincial level. And we have about 70,000, 80,000 small uh, companies. And uh, to be competitive, you need somebody who guides this, who coordinates that. And we have three fields where we work. We have one field, which is qualification. So what is the skills we need in future? What are the tools we need in future? And very, very important, I think the most important thing, what is the mindset we need in future? And uh, we come up with peer-to-peer -peer learning formats. So uh, different people, from different organizations meet regularly and uh, share their experiences. They learn from each other. I don't know, some of you might know the concept of uh, word of uh, wor working out loud. So a program over 12 weeks, uh, how to achieve your goals better than you did that before. Second thing is we all learned, our, uh, our guests, our customers, we all learned within the last year how to use Zoom. We all learned how to use MS Teams. So uh, I asked people, you know, how many Zoom calls did you have 2019? And we didn't have that many. And if you think about 2020, we all had, I don't know, three, five per day. So about 200 virtual meetings. So the question now is, how can we get into contact? How can we get into real-time contact with our guests? who sit at home because they also learned how to use these new technical tools. And maybe sometimes, uh, as we had uh, in, the, in the last year, maybe they are happy if somebody visits them from their holiday destination. So that's one part in qualification where we come up with different formats and we try to uh, do sprints and learning experiences together. Apart from qualification, the second term uh, and the second uh, field is experimentation. So we can't base a lot on uh, knowledge of the past. We have to experiment in a new field. And one uh, project, one prototype we did, and Minister Köstinger mentioned it already, was the Austria Experience Data Hub. Imagine you come to Austria for a ski holiday you want to get some information, you, you plan, you want to book, you have to surf on 30, 40, 50 different websites and you have to combine all these things and it's really, really hard work. And if we take other sectors, buying shoes or whatever, it's quite easy to do that online, to customize it, to individualize it. Uh, to our context, what we want. And that was one uh, question we had. How can we come up with a concierge service uh, for a destination by combining many, many different data sets which are stored in different data silos from hotels, from restaurants, from ski lift operators, but also context information like the weather because we need other information when the sun shines than when it's raining. We need other information if we are sitting at home um, and looking on our smartphone where we want to go compared to when we are in the destination and we want to know what should we do today. So together with a global company, together with local startups, we came up with a use case and uh, we collected the data from about 20 different data sets we learned that we had to clean all these data because they are not the quality uh, we can really work with. And afterwards, we came up uh, with an innovate, innovative uh, solution for that. And uh, our job is not creating apps. Our job is 
helping the industry, helping the startups, the tech industry, and then to connect together. So we try to collect data sets, we try to uh, come or rise the quality of the data, and then we come up with an innovation process where everybody's invited. So startups in Austria, but also startups in Silicon Valley are heavily invited to come to us uh, on a virtual hackathon or whatever to come up with new solutions. And the uh, uh, second example I would like to mention here uh, is data journalism. As I said, we have 60, 70,000 small enterprises. We should come up with ideas how we can automate texting. So take different data sets and come up with a link with a, and provide this link for every hotel for instance, and then they get actual every day a data set about if the road is open, how the weather is, how the snow conditions uh, were, and so on and so on. Everything done automatically out of data set. So that's just a few examples that I wanted to bring in, and uh, I think we have the discussion later on. Thanks for having me, and I give back to you, Kylie. Thank you so much. That was really insightful. I think you covered a lot of different elements within the Austrian tour tourism industry, as well as, you know, talking about these different silos. I think that's really exciting to see, you know, how these silos combine as we go forward into the future. And now I'd like to pass it on to Martin. Thank you so much, Reinhardt. Thank you. And our next guest is Suresh Sivanyanan the Managing Director of Modul University in Vienna. Minister has mentioned this university, being very proud to have this uh, leading university of tourism in Vienna. Suresh is the majority shareholder and managing director of this university, which is Europe's leading research platform for the tourism industry, as well as the face behind the e-health initiative MU Med. Um, Suresh um, also uh, uh, was leading in this uh, e-health initiative, which is a virtual and telemed healthcare concierge for tourists and business travelers. Uh, it is to be launched by the university within the next months. Uh, the initiative aims to improve tourists' choices and access to all kinds of medical services in the future. So welcome, Suresh. But before we talk about this e-health initiative, let's talk a little bit about Modul University in Vienna. Um, since you have um, entered uh, at, at this university, you have shifted its focus uh, considerably. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about these changes at one of the top educational institutions for tourism in the world? Martin, Kylie, thank you. So, thank you so much for having me. I thought we were going to talk about the football first. Yeah, was it going to be the case? <laughs> oh, wait, we'll, we'll talk about the football later. <laughs> and it, I'm, I'm really grateful for the, uh, the opportunity to uh, speak about Madul and MU Med and about the initiatives that we're actually doing. So the changes that we've, that I've tried to do with my board uh, and uh, the team has been one in terms of utilizing the focus that we have on tourism, looking at the digitalization and you and effectively focusing on how we can improve uh, the way that we assist uh, industry going forward. So ultimately it's, it's a great university. It's a brand of over a hundred years, as you know, uh, which started off with a school uh, over in Vienna, and I'm extremely proud to be the majority owner and the managing director of, uh, of Madul. Um, and I have a really easy job, to be honest, because it's, such, it's got such a great brand. Um, I get the opportunity to talk to prime ministers and ministers around the world about how the university can effectively assist uh, them, tourism, going forward. Um, and it's really that if, the, if the, the question that you asked me there, Martin, is really how we're utilizing our knowledge and applying, applying it from a practical perspective. That's, that's a major change that we've, done, that, we've, uh, that we've done over the last 12 months. So now uh, I would also like you to talk a little bit about this e-health initiative and also uh, the initiative itself. But why do you think that that particular uh, aspect um, of tourism is uh, crucial, right, for, for uh, innovation uh, in the entire sector. Absolutely. So let me give you about the journey about the e-health uh, side of things, certainly from my perspective, which was started about six years ago. So I had this idea that the way that, uh, and some of you, most of you will know that affects my background is healthcare mainly in the main. So education is quite a new thing for me in terms of where we've, where we've got to. So 
for the last uh, for the last 20 years, my background has been in healthcare and investments uh, within healthcare. And I was looking about six years ago in terms of how we could change the face of healthcare with regards to the engagement between doctors as well as patients. And the reason for that was because ultimately what you've got is a situation where we have an aging population globally um, and ultimately there are too few doctors and ancillary uh, members of staff to effectively healthcare staff to look after the aging population. So six years ago, when I, I thought to myself, okay, how do we use a smartphone and how do we effectively connect doctors to patients? Now, the problem that we had six years ago was that the thought of a doctor speaking to a patient or a patient speaking to a doctor on a phone was like, that can't happen. I wasn't trained to do that. I was trained to see a patient in front of me. I need to effectively see them. I need to effectively consult with them. So the engagement between the patient and the doctor six years ago wasn't there. The pandemic has changed that significantly. It's been a quick turnaround where most patients don't want to see their doctors. They want effectively want to speak to them on the phone. They want to speak to them on, you know, they want to effectively do a video consultation. They don't want to go into a surgery now. They actually say, listen, is there a quicker way of me accessing a doctor or healthcare through a digital platform? So then at uh, Modul, one of the things that we looked at was to say, look, what I've effectively learned over the last five, six years is that the pandemic and the digital application of healthcare can now be applied to tourism. And the reason why I say that is because most of us who travel, we will go to a foreign country or a foreign country to us, and we may not speak the language, something may happen, and it's a case of who do we call? So MU Med, which is what we're launching in the next two months, is a signpost. So not only is it an app, but it's signpost the, tour the tourists as well. So it effectively guides them through a concierge service to say, do you need to speak to a doctor? Do you need to go to a pharmacy? Do you effectively need allergy advice as well? So allergies is a big thing as well. So the support of tourists in Vienna will effectively change from our application, obviously, you know, and I thank the minister for uh, having the faith in us, you know, in terms of uh, our background and our brand to effectively be able to develop this as well, which is ultimately the, the, the key thing in supporting tourism, not only in Austria, but worldwide. What we've got to understand is that tourism will effectively need to change and healthcare applications will need to change because as a tourist, when we're now, when we're now traveling to a different country, we do want access to a doctor. We want to speak to them in our language of choice. We want to effectively know what's the active ingredient in my country and what's the active ingredient in a medical. So for example, if I go to a pharmacy, I know the medication that I need, but in a foreign country, what is that active ingredient? So signposting and assisting the tourists to a pharmacy, that pharmacy helping them choose their medication is becoming so more and more important. The allergy side of things is a really interesting thing because as, um, uh, as a father who's, who has a child uh, who has four allergies, you know, the allergy side of things is really important. And funny enough, when he was born 20 years ago, the only place that I could go to was McDonald's because that's the only place that could tell me what was actually in the food. So as you know, allergies have become a significant thing. So ourselves with airlines, with restaurants, with the whole tourists and with different sectors will now effectively produce the all singing, all dancing platform, which effectively links tourists to, to tourism, to, to cities, but also looking at various things that's more pertinent to them. Well, that's, that's a wonderful uh, example, I think, that we can all relate to. And it is also an example of how um, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has uh, in some ways led uh, to innovation. So thank you so much, Suresh. And since you mentioned football at the beginning, I know that you are rooting for England. So all the best for that. That's, that's also another kind of tourism. Uh, and I know that you're, you're hoping uh, for, for England to reach the final because you've got tickets for the, for, for the stadium. So I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. Thanks a lot, Martin. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Suresh. And now we're going to bring our next speaker up, Tobias Schrott. Tobias is the founder and head of growth at Giggle.Tips, an experienced oh. channel manager for hotels and hosts in tourism. After having acquired in-depth understanding as a consultant within the tourism industry, he was on a mission to shift the industry's focus from selling overnights to creating unique experiences. Giggle.tips showcases the experiences hotels offer automatically via marketing, communication, social, and information channels, while at the same time analyzing interests of individual guest target groups to further improve their offers. So, Tobias, I just want to ask, 
how open are your customers in the tourism industry for change and digital digitalization? Wow, such a great question to start, Kylie. And thanks for the invite, uh, Kylie. Thanks, Martin. It's really a pleasure to be here, man. So many exciting people. And uh, yeah, the question is a good one because we hear that um, also from our tourism minister before that, you know, crisis can be a big change, you know, also towards positive directions. And what we faced uh, the last months was a huge open mindedness from the tourism and hotel sector because we had all those needs in the industry, you know, for becoming more unique, for becoming more self-aware. We had, you know, the trans transformation between generations in tourism. We had, you know, huge problems with hiring and staffing in our industry. It was not that easy. And now that, you know, COVID has happened, um, we see that there's so much more open-mindedness to think beyond, to become more unique, uh, to become more personal. And this has really, I think, given uh, the industry in the end a boost in the long run. Awesome to hear, because yeah, I completely agree. And I think it's very interesting to see how COVID has affected, you know, travelers and then going forward to travelers of the future. And so on that note of travelers of the future, what are the demands and concerns, you know, going forward in the hospitality sector? And what do platforms like giggle.tips, like what role do they play in how businesses in the sector can showcase and distribute, you know, tourism experiences? Wow. Um, well, basically, um, Giggle is based basically on that question because our hotel customers, and we are grateful because we've grown massively with hotels and experiences in our cloud, and they are all, you know, joining Giggle on, based on the belief that they as a host, they as a hotel, they are so much more than just a beautiful place to sleep. And so it's said that, you know, if you look back, you know, how we did marketing in the last 15 years in hotel online marketing, it's always about answering the same question. Where's my hotel located? How does it look like? So the infrastructure, this is where investments are being directed. Um, and in the end, how much does it cost? And that's literally how hundreds of thousands of hotels only in Europe and the union here compete with each other. And uh, in the end, what makes them really unique is basically what's hidden behind the hotel facade. You know, the people that offer experience with great passion, we have made it our big goal to make those experiences visible to the world, to make holiday marketing in the end more unique. Wonderful to hear. And it's so exciting that you found your little niche in the startup world. So do you think that there's a, or do you see a lot of potential for growth for startups in the hospitality industry overall? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in so many directions. Um, I think especially if you take the way like ho hotel marketing works nowadays, um, I think it's quite surprising and I think it's some stats I uh, heard recently that almost 50% of total marketing and advertising spendments in the global hotel industry are still spent offline for things like trade fairs and brochures and all those classy things, you know. And if you take a look on the digital ad spends of the hotel industry, more than half of those digital ad spendings are still being spent on Google search. So paid search and in the end, Google display and only a very little fraction, for example, is being spent on social ads. And I do believe there's a huge space for improvement in the way how we present ourselves, you know, in terms of hotel marketing online. And we want Giggle to be a big part of that innovation in the end. Thank you so much, Tobias. I love this little insight into a startup's <laughs> view into the tourism and hospitality industry. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for the invite. And now on to Stefan Linhardt. Uh, he is the senior director sales uh, for Austria and Slovakia of the Lufthansa Group. But Mr. Linhardt has been working for Austrian Airlines for over two decades. Uh, I mean, many positions also as deputy area manager Austria, and he's currently the senior director for sales for Austria and Slovakia for the Lufthansa Group, which means for Austrian Airlines, Brussels, Lufthansa, and Swiss. And there you are uh, responsible for developing and implementing the sales and marketing strategies in the respective countries, managing industry and public relations. So welcome, Stefan. And here is my question. What does the future, what does the future hold for the air travel industry? Which of course, as we all know, has suffered tremendously during the COVID-19 pandemic. We've all seen some major changes in how people fly. For those of you who have taken a plane during the pandemic, which I have recently, 
And uh, people, of course, now wear masks um, the whole time. There's more space between, um, between the seats. And then uh, people, of course, when they check in, there's um, a, a completely new procedure. But that's COVID-19. And that might go away or might stay. So a question to you, uh, what changes are here to stay and will become permanent? And what do you see? The, what kind of future do you see for the airlines that have, have suffered now so tremendously during the pandemic? First of all, thank you, Martin and Kyle and all the guys from Open Austria for having me. My pleasure to be here. And I hope you were flying recently with Lufthansa Group Airlines, as you have mentioned, Martin. Um, but we talk later probably about that. <laughs> Let's see that. <laughs> no, but an excellent question. I think it's 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 not exaggerated to say that the that the day that the global pandemic has hit the airline industry uh, as hard as it has been uh, since the 1940 years. Um, although the industry is pretty much bound and, and pretty much affected by various crises, be it warfare, be it terror, be it any natural catastrophes like tsunamis, like volcano eruptions, I don't know what. But the level of which the current pandemic has hit us was really out of the ordinary for everybody. And um, this is why we had to really move fast in order to, to secure our business. And this is why also innovation, as this whole thing is about innovation, had to be pretty much stopped during the last year, as a matter of fact, because all the airlines in this world had to fight for the survival because we were faced to, to keep our airplanes on ground from one day to the other and we couldn't fly. Um, and I think that the major things which will which will change in, in a way is that safety for travelers as such, or let's say the feeling to be safe somewhere, be it on, an, on board an airplane, be it at an airport, be it at a hotel, be it wherever they go, um, will increase and I think it will be there to stay, um, definitely. Um, I also do believe that um, travel as such uh, will become maybe more of a, of a commodity, like a little bit less of a public transport method, which it just used to become, but maybe become a little bit more, um, let's say, I wouldn't call it elite, but a little bit more um, not for everybody. Although I do see still that the industry as such, when we look forward, is still on a growth path. I mean, the, the most prominent figure, which I always mention, is that nine out of 10 people living on this earth have never boarded an airplane yet. So this just shows you how much how great the growth potential is. And this is also, I think, an opportunity for us um, as human beings and as a society, because I do believe that the tourism industry does a great job for society, connecting people, connecting cultures, people allowing to travel wherever they want to go, talk to people from different countries, connect with them culturally, intellectually. I think this is, if we keep going like that, that would make our world a better place. And this is uh, what I hope that the people will see the situation that travel becomes a little bit more of a hassle with all the additional checks going on with probably having to wear a mask on board and all these kind of things. And I remember after 9-11, uh, when this whole thing came with the fluids and the additional security checks, and it was quite a dump for the industry. But at the end of the day, the travelers got used to it. And we found ways somehow this and there where we could ease these pains a little bit with different procedures and 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 increasing or, or, or improving infrastructure here and there. And I think people will get used to that. And um, pretty much like, although it's a little bit far-fetched to say right now, I still see a bright future for the industry and for travel and for tourism as such. Absolutely. But this is really, really interesting what you're saying. So you're saying um, on the one hand, there's great potential for growth because uh, so many people haven't really traveled yet. At the same time, you're saying travel will not be for everyone. Uh, so it will become something more sophisticated. Um, I want to point to some of the trends that are not only um, challenging for airlines, but also challenging for the tourism industry in general. And that is, we have discovered uh, through COVID-19 that we don't need to go anymore so much to conferences, we can join them virtually. So does that, uh, is, is that something that affects business travels, um, you know, that there are less conferences? That, that, that's one question. And the other question is really directly uh, aimed at what you said about air travel getting more sophisticated. Um, are there some kind of 
does that mean that the cabin kind of will change or will also become kind of more sophisticated? Will there be some new amenities that the, the passengers will be looking for? Will, will the whole experience of traveling, apart from the, you know, the necessary COVID-19 measures, um, which we all already are kind of more or less familiar with, I'm not sure we are used to them yet, but we are familiar with them, but will the entire travel experience um, change in the near future? Um, quite some questions. Um, let's start with the first one. Yeah, on the one hand side, I do, I do see a lot of growth potential for the industry also looking forward. Um, but there is no denying the fact that the pandemic will at least uh, limit this growth or even will lead to a decline uh, in, in demand in certain segments. And you mentioned it perfectly well, Martin, the business travel segment will be one of those which will be hit the most by the pandemic. I'm pretty sure about that. And also talking to various customers from the uh, from the business travel sector, uh, we all assume that at the end of the day, probably 20 to 25% less people will travel for business than before the pandemic. Is this a trend which will be long-term next five, 10 years? I don't know, but looking forward for the next couple of years, I definitely see this as, an, as a realistic scenario to, to, to look at like that. Although I also see that many companies do see like we are now doing an online conference. It's not a substitute for 100% for meeting people. And we are still human beings and we, we drive and we live on interaction with people. So the interactivity is one tool which will be used more in the future. I'm sure about that, but it will not wholly substitute business travel. I'm pretty sure about that. And as soon as, I don't know how, how anybody of you in this call recognizes that as soon as you come into different negotiations, different topic which you need to discuss, you come to the borders of online uh, meetings. You need to see the person, you need to feel the person, you need to see the body language, you need to react on the on the different reactions and stuff like that, the mimics. So I think um, it's still there, but on the tourism side, I still see um, that the growth will be still be there, but we have to make sure that we, that we um, enable this growth economically and ecologically sustainable. I think that's a very important thing to do because as much as the airline industry has been growing and tourism industry has been growing over the last decades, um, there are still a few, very few airlines who have really been profitable in this time, which is not a coincidence. There are some structural issues behind it. So this is the one thing we all need to make money at the end of the day with what we're doing, not, not only airlines, but also hotels, tour operators, whoever is in this service chain. Um, and, on, and on the other side also that we make it uh, in a way that we still keep our environment safe and, 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 and sound. And as you looked at amenities within the aircraft, I think at least when it comes to the mechanical innovation of aircraft build that there has been a lot of things going on over the last years. I don't know how many of you guys have been flying with a, what we call the new generation of aircrafts like the Boeing 787 or the eight, Airbus A350 family. Um, they are way less noise, so you hardly hear the engine. When you sit in the aircraft, you hardly hear the engine during in-flight, so the noise is reduced. The kerosene uh, output, so the fuel consumption, is reduced by up to 25%, which is good for us as an airline because it increases profitability, but also good for the environment because it reduces the CO2 emissions. Um, and also when you when you step out of this aircraft after a long haul flight, you feel a lot more healthier because the whole ventilation system within the aircraft, the, the quality of the air you breathe is, is way, way better than it is used to be. So I think there are a lot of things going on there. That's really, really fascinating, Stefan. And uh, I think uh, you really showed us the way and in a very honest and blunt way that there are some real big challenges for the airlines, but there are also some opportunities and I think it's it's very interesting uh, to to follow your observations about the actual experience of flight and how it is uh, going to change. You did mention at the beginning your hope that those of us who live in Silicon Valley and travel to Austria that they take the Lufthansa group. I can assure you that that is most of the times the case but I do want to use this opportunity to express the wish of many many fellow Austrians be they startups or be they um, you know, working in the tech industry, there is no direct connection between Vienna and San Francisco, and that should change. And if that is possible, uh, I think even more people would use the Lufthansa Group 
uh, to, to connect between Silicon Valley and Vienna. So that, that's just the wish I want to convey because every time Austrians meet in Silicon Valley. It's the wish I, I, I have heard from quite some people, I have to admit, Martin, this doesn't make you special anyway, but we have heard that and we let's see how we're going to do that. I promise you that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stefan. And now, last but not least, we'd like to invite our final speaker up, Ellen Medekar. She is Airbnb's head of public policy for the Dach region, Central and Eastern Europe, and Russia. Ellen joined Airbnb from the German Travel Association and the umbrella organization for the German travel industry, where she was head of strategy. Previously, Ellen, who holds a PhD in sociology from the University of Passau, spent seven years in Brussels working in various positions for the representation of the state of Hessen to the EU and the Friedrich Naumann Foundation for Freedom. So Ellen, with all the trends emerging from the pandemic being, you know, like work vacations and longer stays and more meaningful travel, it sounds like it was actually, you know, good trends for Airbnb. So I'd just like to ask as a digital platform, do you think Airbnb was significantly better positioned than other more traditional members of the industry to adapt the pandemic? Thanks for the question, Kylie. And let me also thank you for having me, uh, Kylie and Martin, at this event. I think it's a very promising approach um, to um, sort of um, interlink and connect Silicon Valley and, and, and Austria. And uh, let me just share that I, I I, I listened very attentively when the minister spoke and I just love this approach right to encourage digital innovation and um, also Austria's approach to um, to be an international hub for innovation, especially in the field of tourism. So this, this is just a brilliant match right with with Airbnb and a promising approach, especially when for Austria when it's compared with with what you what you call tradition just let me share that you know one of my my like my fondest uh, childhood memories go back to austria because i grew up um, at right at the border to austria you mentioned the university of passau where i graduated also so i mean th there is uh, lots and lots of uh, memories about tourism and um and the crisis let's say and covid 19 i mean that was obviously a big challenge for all of us, for each and every one, right? And also clear that tourism was um, hit particularly hard, and that that includes all of us, uh, Airbnb also. And um, now we're just glad to see that that tourism is coming back. Um, uh, but we see that it's coming back differently and in different forms, um, and that. You know the way we travel, the way we work, uh, the way we live is is a bit different now in the post-pandemic world. Um, as you pointed already out, you know some of the trends that you that you mentioned. Um, people become a lot more flexible. This has to do, I mean, with with digitization also. That you know we some most many of us have this this privilege to work remotely. So that makes us flexible. You know, when it comes to you know making holiday plans or plans around friends and family, and um, and and yes, as a platform, Airbnb has adapted quite adapted quite quick, quickly to that. And, you know, we made our search engine more, you know, more flexible and um, introduced new filters and, you know, made everything more user-friendly and accessible. And then what we also see is we see, um, a, you know, cities are, are coming back, like Vienna also is coming back, but at the same time, we see a shift away from these iconic cities like Vienna, Berlin, also to rural areas and I think this is to to the benefit of, of, of local communities also away from the big cities um, like you know in upper Austria for example or lower Austria in the mountains in the countryside um, we just had a, we have a wonderful partnership with the Austrian Farm States Association for example that is just beautiful and um, and and where you can book farm stays also on, on Airbnb and, and and this helps tremendously to, to disperse um, tourism, you know, away from the big hotspots and just help a bit also with all this discussion about over tourism that we had before the pandemic in the big cities. Um, and then people stay longer, um, which is of benefit of local communities also. 
And um, as Tobias pointed out before, they people look for uniqueness, you know, when they travel. They might not travel, you know, far. They might not travel far east because that's difficult anyway, but they tend to stay, you know, they would maybe just, you know, uh, hop on the train or even go by car, but they want their experience to be unique. So about Austria, for example, I can tell you that, you know, people look into, you know, like say, stays in tents and tree houses because, you know, you know, they, they want to be close to, to you know, um, um, nature. Um, so uniqueness of travel is, is another thing that um, we also are considering, you know, when, when, when shaping our platform and the, the user or the, the guest experience. Now, um, when, when it comes to all these changes, as, as everybody pointed rightly out, digitization is, is the key. But I think there are two more leading principles. There is innovation and then there is collaboration. Um, as Airbnb, we have um, over 100 um, partnerships and collaborations only this year. We have set them up you know, to make travel more, more sustainable and then um, also make sure that local communities um, benefit from travel coming back in, in these different forms. Um, and we rely heavily, of course, on the power as a tech company and the power of digitization. Um, let me just share with you that just only last year we launched uh, our city portal. It's like a, a gateway um, designed for the needs of DMOs and for, um, and for governments um, to make data sharing easier and also to, you know, help them find the information there they need to understand market dynamics, but also when it comes to, you know, um, lawmaking process and, you know, designing rules that, that work to the benefit of everyone. And I know many of you and many of the people who, who listen and watch today are based in Silicon Valley, and we have already rolled this out and partner with San Francisco, which works really well, and looking also for a partner in Austria, right, to collaborate and, and, and make this, this work. Um, and um, I mean, when I look at Austria, I can see, I mean, it's, it's known, right, for being a thought leader in, in e-government, in e-administration. Um, and um, I'm aware also that um, Austria is, is planning um, a digital registration system for, you know, Ferienwohnungen or short-term rentals, as we like to call that, um, which we are super supportive of. Um, because it's promising to have a digital solution in place, right? Because um, it's transparent and um, it, it, it helps both sides, right? Because um, it's, it's, um, it's, it makes it tangible and, and transparent for both sides. And we would just be happy right, to share our learnings on this and, and, and uh, would be keen to, to support this. So that's basically my message also today, um, you know, when it comes to you know tapping on the potential of of digitization and innovation and and also collaboration um, um i think we just should you know work together and 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 see what this brings and um to make you know tourism come back also in a healthier form because i think this is this is the chance now to make it come back healthier and of course also super important to me also personally more sustainable yeah, I think that's huge, especially with the going trends of, you know, making travel sustainable and good for the communities that are being, you know, visited. I think that's awesome that you're having this very thoughtful development in the process of rebuilding tourism. And I see that we did have a question in the chat related to Airbnb. So I'll ask that quickly before we move on. Is there a sharp or has there been a sharp reduction in Airbnb housing opportunities in the Dach region? I'm just trying to understand the question, honestly. A yeah. sharp reduction in Airbnb housing opportunity. Um, I guess this relates to um, Michael Kronheim. Offering maybe, uh, offering homes or... Yes, I think it, 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 it means oh, okay. like uh, okay. there's been a reduction. Well, um, actually supply is coming back. I mean, um, people had, you know, um, especially during the pandemic, uh, also in Austria, um, touristic travel was, you know, very much limited, obviously. So people, um, 
you know, and, and we as a platform obviously made, made health and safety a top priority, just like right from the beginning. So obviously it happened that, you know, supply was, as we like to call it, deactivated. Um, so it remained there, but it, it was not accessible, you know, because, you know, people had to follow the rules and we encouraged our host and indirectly, of course, also the, the guests to follow these local rules to make to make sure, you know, um, that that when travel comes back, it is it is healthy and safe for everyone. So that has happened. But now supply is coming back and people activate their listings. Thank you so much. I want to end it with one question to, uh, and it's the same question to all our panelists. Your really interesting um, comments uh, showed us that you are really uh, experts in your field, but you're also tourists, I imagine, yourself, and you're, you're traveling around the world. So in one sentence, if you think of the future, uh, if you think of the next five to 10 years and think of yourself as a traveler, as a tourist, what would be in one sentence your ideal trip, your ideal travel? And I'll start with uh, Suresh. Thanks for that, Martin. So the ideal travel, um, safe, sustainable, um, and short. That's basically it. And that's great. And that's very to the point. To be us. Well, definitely sustainable, and I think uh, most likely I'd like to have great experiences with similar or like-minded or inspiring people that fit to my own, you know, um, interests and ideas and, and, and kind of, yeah, give me new insights and experiences in the end. Wonderful. Reinhardt. Quite similar, yeah. I will uh, looking forward to great uh, people and uh, great meetings there, which transform my life. That's great. Ellen. Um, as I pointed out, sustainability is, is important to me. So it would be healthy seas and the variety of animals. It would be healthy forests and clean air. And at the same time, um, great encounters um, with, um, with hosts um, and with local communities. That's really great that you all really stayed within the parameters of saying it all in one sentence. And it really showed that great minds think alike of all very, very similar ideas about traveling in the future, traveling tourism uh, in the future, the future of tourism. That was our first edition of the Open Salon Digital Imperative. Stay tuned, we will have now a summer break. We will also be traveling ourselves at the Open Austria, uh, uh, at the Open Austria uh, team. And we will come back with the Digital Imperative series right after the summer break in September, uh, focusing on uh, other areas uh, of digitalization of the Digital Imperative, other areas of industries in Austria putting a spotlight at the digital transformation, coming up with best practices and wonderful examples in the various areas that are important to the Austrian economy. And I want to say at the end, we're doing this in collaboration with our partner here in San Francisco, Salesforce, a great thanks uh, to our partner here for supporting this initiative. And also thanks to our partner in Austria, Broadcasten, our media partnership. Thank you so much to the panelists uh, today for providing us such excellent insight into the future of tourism. And I would like to also thank all the uh, viewers uh, who chimed in. We will also stream uh, uh, this um, event online on the Open Austria YouTube channel for those of you who couldn't make it and can now watch it online. Thank you so much and see you again in September at our next digital imperative. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.